Throughout history, there are many examples of poor designs, of disappointments made airworthy, or flying coffins made out of graft, and or incompetence. Sometimes these planes actually do deserve these critiques, but more often than not, these conclusions are formed with purposefully limited context to taint an aircraft's public reputation, either by rival companies trying to sell a competitive design, by propagandists wishing to show the seeming weakness of their enemies, or by sensational newspapers who are not in possession of all the facts because said facts are classified and unavailable. An example of this is the subject of today's episode, the F-2A Buffalo by Brewster. It has throughout history been a fan favorite for criticism, to the point it's been called, without hyperbole, the worst plane ever built. As you can guess by the above dissertation, however, that is not entirely accurate to Brewster's Buffalo. As covered before, albeit briefly, the Buffalo was originally developed for the 1935 request by the US Navy to replace their F-3F biplanes. Brewster at this point in time had only made one other aircraft, the SBN, which was a total failure. Not only that, they were suffering from extreme mismanagement that bordered on malice, making the company forever in a financial crisis. While the company never saw a break from misfortune and mismanagement, their designers had some better luck when it came to actually making the Buffalo's original design, which was first taken to NACA for wind tunnel testing and refinement, a standard process pioneered by the Buffalo, then having the prototype delivered and first flown in 1937, wherein it was found to be pretty good, at least initially. The pre-production examples were found to be very maneuverable by test pilots, with fighter ace legend Pappy Boyington stating, quote, The early models were pretty sweet little ships. Not real fast, but they could turn and roll in a phone booth. I emphasize original design, initially good performance, and early models, as these pre-production aircraft lacked many things the Navy wanted and insisted on adding, namely radios and pilot armor. These added weight that Brewster hadn't designed a margin for, and so when these were added, they ruined the plane's performance, even making it somewhat of a hazard to land as the undercarriage developed a concerning tendency to collapse upon landing. Though accepted into service, as despite these problems it still was an improvement over the F-3F, Brewster then ran into a comical amount of problems of their own making by overpromising production figures and then effectively not delivering at all. They straight up lied to the Navy about their capacity to fulfill orders in an effort to ensure a contract, done so as a Hail Mary to keep the company afloat, or line the higher-ups on pockets, depending on which story you believe. It got so bad that eventually the Navy had to step in directly and take control of the company to set things right, as despite all of these troubles, controversies, and general insanity of Brewster's mismanagement, it had secured a few foreign export orders to Finland, the British and its Commonwealth, and the Dutch East Indies. The only time the Buffalo saw combat and U.S. service would be over Midway with the Marines, who would try to use it to defend Midway, but were slaughtered near to a man by the Zeros, as the Marines were flying the even heavier F-2A-3s, which were too slow to run, too sluggish to outmaneuver, and too weak to endure the punishment the Zeros handed out. Outside of U.S. service, however, the Buffalo had a slightly more successful career thanks to the ironic fact that the export aircraft were better than the U.S. Navy aircraft by virtue of being denavalized, being notably lighter than their U.S. counterparts. The Finnish used them to good effect during the Continuation War and are the most common example for the Buffalo's good merits. Buffalo's established a 32 to 1 kill-loss ratio against many types of Soviet fighters, many of which having been seen as better than the Buffalo on a pure statistical level, discounting pilot skill and training, or supply situations and logistical integrity. Finland loved the Buffalo so much they even tried to make a Buffalo at home, air quotes, with the VL Humu, though it ended up being a disappointment. Other users of the Buffalo, such as the Dutch and British Commonwealth, had early struggles against Japanese Ki-43 Oscars in the East, but after modification and severe lightening of the airframes, they were able to make the Buffaloes a pure adversary against the nimble Hayabusas, with Buffaloes and the Flying Tigers forming the defense of Rangoon in late 1941. The Dutch in particular, due to having no other options, flew the Buffalo with fervor in the East Indies until they surrendered in late 1942, with a few aces even managing to shoot down zeros in the damn thing. Though often given a bad rap, the Buffalo did perform well when it wasn't weighed down and overloaded in the early parts of World War II. It also arguably was the rude awakening needed for US fighter doctrine to get into gear and take the zero seriously for the Pacific Theater, 
which Claire Chennault did in 1941, leading to the two-plane mutual defense formation and later development of tactics such as the famous thatch weave. Today, there are only a few export models of Buffalo still around in museums, as no original F2As exist. Several original export examples and replicas exist in Finland in various states, including their Buffalo at Home, and the Netherlands also hold a replica on display holding the markings of Lieutenant Gerard Brugink, one of the earlier mentioned aces who managed to down a zero in a buffalo. Brewster as a company, however, would not survive, as their earlier misfortunes would culminate in the company's dissolvement in 1946 by its shareholders, having only survived that long thanks to a licensed production run of Corsairs. Before then, they would attempt some prototype designs, but with the calamity of the buffalo fresh in the US Navy's mind, they never had any of their proposals accepted. Connecting back to what I said in the beginning, the reason the Buffalo has had such a strong base of critics for so long is that, for the longest time, the only fight the public knew regarding the Buffalo was its slaughter over Midway. Not its heroic actions in the Dutch East Indies, or its frankly Herculean efforts in the Continuation War. It is by all means not a great aircraft, but it wasn't the worst plane ever built, as that award I believe goes to the absolute fever dream that is the Christmas Bullet. Sure, both aircraft may have been built by conmen seeking to exploit the military-industrial complex for their own gains, but there's a key difference between them. The Buffalo, unlike the Bullet, was actually built, actually flew, and did in fact shoot down enemy aircraft. It achieved, albeit sometimes barely, the bare minimum requirements to be considered a fighter aircraft, and those bare minimum requirements were good enough for some people to defend their homelands very effectively.